Hello everyone and welcome to this video on the Python programming language. So in this video we're going to create some code that shows the stock market returns during a US election. So we're basically going to kind of see how the US election affects the stock market. Right now I'm currently on Google's website. It's called colab.research.google.com. I'm on it because it makes it really easy to get started programming in Python. So if you're gonna program along with me, just go to this website and then log in using your Google account to get started writing your Python code. All right, so to get started with me, go ahead and click on file then click on new notebook and drive. And this will open up a new tab for you and a cell. Now, once that cell opens up for you, go ahead and type in some comments. So here I'm gonna type in a comment. I'm gonna put in a description about the program. So here I'm going to put this code shows the stock market returns during a U.S. election and more specifically the U.S. stock market. All right. So also I should say that if you want the code from this video and or the data set, you can get that on Patreon at patreon.com slash computer science. And I will leave a link for that in the description below. And also, if you like this video, then click the subscribe and like button. And to be notified about new videos from this channel, hit that bell notification. All right, so with all that being said, let's go ahead and continue writing the code. So I'm going to create a new cell by clicking this code button in the top left. It looked like my runtime was disconnected, but it's okay. It looked like we're back. So I'm going to click this code button here in the top left. And that creates a new cell for me. And now here I'm going to import the libraries that I plan on using throughout the program. So Google gives me a bunch of suggestions here and they all look pretty good except for that last one. So I'm just gonna tab over and I'm gonna get rid of this here. All right, so let's go ahead and run this cell by clicking this button here to the left. And I get a little check mark saying everything looks good and everything's okay after executing this code. So I'm gonna create a new cell. And now I'm going to load the SMP 500 data. All right, to do this, I'm going to create a variable called SP 500, and I'm going to set it equal to pd.read underscore CSV. And then I need to put in the CSV file name that I want to read. And to do that, you will need to have that file already uploaded to Colab. So go over here to the folder like icon called files, click on it. And to upload your SMP 500 data set, click this icon, the upload icon, and then upload your SMP 500 file. All right. So I have this data set called SP 500 underscore data dot CSV, and that's what I want to read. So I'm going to put that here SP 500 underscore data dot CSV. All right. Let's go ahead and double click it just to kind of take a look at it. So I'm going to exit out of the left pane and over here it should load up. And once it loads up, we're going to take a look at some of the columns, some of the data. It is taking a little bit longer than usual. Let's give it some time. Okay. So it looks like it's done. And now we can see the columns here. And we have the date column. We have the adjusted close column, the close column. If I scroll over even more, we have high, low, open, volume. All right, so we have all of this data. What I want to do is I want to make that date column the index. And so I can do that by adding some parameters here and my method, my read underscore CSV method. So let me exit out of this. All right, I'm gonna put a comma here, and then I'm gonna type parse underscore dates, set it equal to true, and then set index call equal to our date column. All right, so now if I run this, everything looks good. I should have shown the data, so I'm gonna go ahead and just type show data here. So I'm going to type SP500, and let's run this one more time. And now we take a look at the data set this way. 
and we can still see the same columns except for we no longer have that date column right because our date is now the index all right so if i scroll down here i can see that i have 18,121 rows of data and i have those six columns all right so that's our data set all right so i'm going to go ahead and create a new cell and now i'm going to calculate the annual returns so calculate the annual returns so i'm going to create two i'm going to create two new columns so one column i will call year and year will hold the year from our date and to get that we just type sp500 dot index dot year okay next i'm going to create another column so i'm going to call this column annual return all right and i'm going to set this equal to sp500 and I'm going to use the adjusted close price. And then I'm going to type dot ECT underscore change. And I want the periods to be equal to. I want the periods to be equal to 252 because there's 252 trading days in a year. All right, so let's go ahead and run that. Everything looks good so far. I'm going to create a new cell. All right, now I'm going to define the US election years. And I'm sure there's a better way to do this than what I'm about to do. But I, I am going to create a variable called election underscore years. And I'm going to set it equal to 1952, 1956. I need to put a comma here. Here. All right, 1960, 1964. 1968, 12, 2016, 2020, and 2024. Hopefully, I did not mess up anywhere. Like I said, there's definitely a better way to do this than what I just did by typing out all these dates. But I use 1952 because our data set starts in 1952, and I used 20 or ended in 2024 because our data set ends in 2023. All right, of December. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this cell. Let's create a new cell. And now here, I want to categorize the years. All right, so I'm going to create a new column called election year. And I'm going to set this equal to SP500 year dot apply. I'm going to use a lambda function. And actually, what Google's suggesting here looks pretty good. So I'm just going to tab over. I'm going to get rid of that semicolon. OK. So now it's saying if x is in election years it's going to put before election actually i'm going to put here i'm going to put election year right and put a capital y and else i'm going to put non-election year non-election year non-election year Okay. All right, so I think that looks good now. Let's go ahead and run this. Let's create a new cell. Okay, so now I'm going to group the data by the election year and calculate the average returns. So I'm going to create a variable called average underscore returns. 
and what Google suggests here looks good. So we're going to group by the election year and we're going to get the mean of the annual return. So I think that looks good. Let me make sure I put a comment here. We're grouping by election year and calculating the average returns. All right, so let's go ahead and run this. Let's create a new cell. All right, so now I want to print the average S&P 500 returns. Okay. So now if I print average returns, I should get multiple results. So let's go ahead and run this. Perfect. So now I can see the average returns for the S&P 500 during a election year is 0 0.082784. And during non-election years, it's 0 0.089665. So it actually seems to give a slightly higher return during non-election years than it does during election years. All right, so let's go ahead and just graph this out. So I'm going to create a new cell. And I want to visualize the results. So I'm going to just plot average returns. So I'm going to type average returns dot plot. And I'm going to tap this over because what Google is suggesting here looks pretty good. So I do want this to be a bar chart. And sure, we can give it this title. And let's give it some color. So color will be equal to red and blue. OK. And let's add a label. So, so we're going to type plt.x label. So we're going to add a label on the x axis. And it will be the year type and then i'm going to do the same thing for the y label and it will be the average annual return so let's go ahead and run this and then of course we also have plt.show to show the plot so let's go ahead and run this cell and let's see what it looks like okay so there we go we can see the average S&P 500 returns here, average annual returns. And we can see that the election year returns are less than the non-election years. OK. So looks pretty good. Looks like we're probably going to do better next year in the stock market, in the US stock market. But who knows? I cannot predict the future and only time will tell. All right, but I really hope that you all enjoyed this video. Please leave any questions you have in the comment section. Please leave all the likes for this video that you can. And again, if you want to get the code, you can get it on Patreon at patreon.com slash computer science. And of course you can get the data set as well. And thank you all to the Patreons on patreon.com slash computer science. I really appreciate it. Anyways, I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.